discussing the various layout patterns of uh, the main lines and uh, laterals which depend on the, the topography which you are having in a specific area and we had seen some of the layout patterns how they can vary with respect to the availability of the source and with respect to the terrain which is um, prevalent in that particular area. We had uh, discussed specifically those terrains which are, which are uh, quite uh, irregular t terrains, they are not highly irregular. Let us have a look at what will happen when you have uh, irregular terrain. In that case, when you have irregular terrain, what can be the possible layout patterns? Again, these are some of the possible layout patterns. There can be many others which uh, can be used and it will be a function of many, many factors. It will also depend on uh, uh, the choice of the the operator or the, the designer, he can have two or three options out of which you can choose one. Let us have a look at one such possible irregular terrain. Let us take this terrain which has more undulations. If we say that these are the these are the contours. Which in general might find that means there are two ridges which are quite prevalent here. In this case, as we have, and in this uh, particular case, the slope is in this direction, that is the general slope. That means these are the, the contours of higher elevation, these are the contours of relatively lower elevation. As we had uh, earlier mentioned, that we will preferably have the main line on the ridge. Now, if we situate the main line on the ridge and this main line, again the source, the two main lines which we have laid, all these are the, the main line sections. This is the nomenclature which I am using for depicting the main line as we have done earlier also. On these main lines, if you have laid the main line in such a uh, fashion, to operate the laterals, the laterals can be operated in this manner, that you have these two laterals, this moving in this direction and this one moving in this direction. They can be another lateral, another set of laterals, one here, another here. This is moving in this direction and this is moving in this direction. This can be one possible way by which you can operate these, these laterals. This is the layout which can be used. Now, in all these cases, you can see, you can visualize the laterals are on the minimum slope, the main lines are on the min maximum slope and the laterals are taking advantage of the fact that there can be some, some gain in uh, uh, pressure because of the natural slope uh, which, is, which is becoming available to it. So, it is compensating the losses to a certain extent. And then you are also trying to systematically move the, the laterals so that you can cover the whole area in a reasonably good time. But that is entirely, that is another part of the, the design when you have to look at 
an overall uh, uh, sense how many how many liters you will require to cover the whole area within the, the irrigation and towel. Similarly, let's have a, another situation of irregular terrain. In this case, you had quite a symmetric terrain. Let's take a case where you have a terrain which again you have the These are the these are the contours which are again the slope is in this direction. These are the contours of high R elevation and the slope is a down slope with respect to this these contours. In this particular a particular situation, you again if you look at the situation that in this case the slope is in this direction, the general slope, and as far as this part of the field is concerned, the lit, the second part of the, the right hand part or portion of the field is concerned, the slope is in this direction. So preferably, you will like to have the main line laid on one side. I use the same color sequence for laying the main line. This is another main line which is laid down. Now from here. I can have the lateral which is having the sprinkler hedge and that can be moved in this direction. Now the advantage is that in this particular case your main line is laid on one side and you are, you are still taking advantage of the fact that there is some downslope, there is some pressure recovery. Uh, which is possible and if your uh, your lateral is laid down in this uh, particular manner or is in this on this side whereas when you come to the other part now this is the main line which is you are getting the water from the main line suppose if you are getting the water from this end now you are moved here there is no problem because this is the lower elevation. When you move from this to this side, again the problem is not much because you are uh, the, the increase in elevation is not very drastic because this is the same contour, this is the next contour and this is lower than this one. So you are uh, almost going from a higher elevation to a lower elevation and then again the elevation starts rising. But when you when you try to take care of this area, you might have to lay a main line which now will be going from this end to the to upslope. This is the place, this is the point where you will have problem. You will have to have either a pressure which is very excessive to take care of this, uh, this pressure requirement you will have to have a pressure which is very excessive here or you should go in for a booster here. You can have a booster pump here and then that booster pump will provide the additional pressure which is required in this particular line. As far as the, the lateral is concerned, you can have the lateral which is uh, taking care of the the other half of the field and this little you can move up. So this is one, one way of covering this area in which you can uh, 
uh, instead of having a very high pressure in this section of the line because in that case as we discussed earlier if you have very excessive pressures they might be detrimental as far as the, the pressure in these lectures are concerned so either you will have to use some device by which you can control the pressure the pressure regulators have to be used or you can go in for a booster which is a much better uh, option uh, than providing excessive pressure and then bringing them down through the, the, um, the pressure regulators because providing the pressure regulators increases the, the cost. Now with that we we uh, have taken into consideration the various possible layouts but that has not exhausted all the possibilities there are many more which can be which can be uh, still used they can be different than what we have discussed so far let's now try to go on to the the main line design. We have seen that the lateral, in the case of the lateral, we can, uh, what we need is, we need to know that how much will be the loss, then we can choose the lateral with respect to the, the pressure uh, requirement of each individual sprinkler and we have seen all those those various uh, requirements. Uh, when we talk of a main line, again, the main line cannot be designed in isolation. The main line has to be designed with respect to the lateral pressures. What is the pressure requirements of the laterals? Because ultimately, the main line, why you are providing the main line? To provide the, the water at a desirable pressure to the the laterals. So if we, if you say that this is the main line, this is the main line, and this is the lateral, we are interested in when we look at the main line, what is the pressure requirement at the junction of the main line and the lateral? That is what we are basically interested in. So if we designate that pressure as HM, where HM, where HM is the required entrance pressure at main line and keto pascal. This HM can be expressed as HA plus 3 by 4 of HF plus HE plus HR into a factor converted into um, into the kilopascals and the various other items which we have expressed the HM in HA is the design nozzle operating pressure again in kilopascal HF HF is the total friction head loss which we have earlier 
computed in the literal. We have seen the various expressions by which we can find out the head loss in the literal, uh, where we had used that factor f, and this is expressed in meters. H e is the head loss due to the increase in elevation. of lateral from inlet to the critical point. Or the critical sprinkler you can say in meters and H R as the height of sprinkler riser. Now, in this particular case, you might wonder that why we have used this factor of 3 by 4. What happens is that if I take, this is the total length of the literal, you have the, the sprinkler heads which are spaced on this literal. In normal practice, when we do not have the, the sprinklers, if there is a pipe, you can always say that the head loss in the total length of the pipe will be half in the first half of the pipe and in the remaining half of the pipe, it will be another half of the head loss will take place. Whereas in this case, since the discharge is varying, since the pressure is varying, throughout the section of throughout the length of the lateral, the head loss, it has been seen that if you take this total length and the first half of the, the length of the lateral, three-fourth of the head loss will take place in the first half and only one-fourth of the head loss will be taking place in the the next, the subsequent half of the pipe. So, to when we are designing the HM, when we are designing the, the main line for the pressure, we are making an assumption that we are, we are interested in designing for the average value. The pressure, the average pressure which is considered is somewhere in the midway portion of the, uh, the lateral. So, when we take the total lateral, we are only interested that the HA which is applicable HA is the average pressure and the total length of the lateral and that is why we take this 3 by 4 uh, as the, the portion of the head loss uh, because that is what occurs in the first half of the, the length of the lateral. Okay? The height of the sprinkler riser, there is a minimum sprinkler riser height which is recommended, which is a function which depends on the size of the pipe, the riser pipe diameter which is used. The minimum sprinkler riser height. as a function of the riser pipe diameter which is given in centimeters and the minimum height as given also in centimeters. If the riser pipe diameter as 1.27 centimeters, the minimum height of the riser pipe should be 7.6 centimeters. Similarly, there are other recommended 
values which are given for the the range of dias which are normally used so these are the various various values which are recommended values for the the riser pipe uh, height with respect to the diameter of the riser pipe used then besides finding out what is the hm requirement which which is the pressure requirement at at various individual points of the the main line on the main line again is the same thing the main line is also behaving in a similar manner as the lateral is behaving in the case of main line also you might be finding that if you are operating more laterals it will have a similar situation that it is having discharge which is reducing as you go further into the uh, along the length of the main line but even if that is not true one thing is certain that when you are designing the main line you have to look at the criticality of the each individual point where you are tapping the the main line uh, by using a a lateral so the critical pressure requirement is very important to be uh, looked at in a main line let's say this is the main line you might be tapping this main line at various locations and if this is the flow direction the main line let's assume that this is the last portion the last the end of the main line now when i i want to look at what is the critical uh, pressure in the main line the best way is to start with the extreme point because here we know what is the the pressure requirement hm is known as hm has been found out from the the pressure requirement of the individual sprinklers with respect to the other uh, factors which are which are prevalent in a particular lateral so if i if i know what is what is the the pressure requirement here you can find out if you move to this this section of the main line what will be the additional pressure requirement because it has overcome some more the friction uh, fact when the friction of uh, the the main line uh, pipe is one one possible loss which has occurred in this particular uh, zone and uh, there can be some elevation loss or gain there can be some velocity head which is prevalent so all those things if i say that this is n and this i call it i to find out what is the pressure requirement at point i the pressure head requirement if i call it at i this is this can be put equal to at n this is the pressure requirement at point n plus h f i n plus h e i n plus h v i n what are these terms h i we say we have already mentioned that this the pressure had uh, requirement at point Uh, i and this is expressed in meters h n 
is the pressure at required at point N. So is the pressure at requirement at point N again expressed in meters. HFIN as the friction head loss there will be some friction head loss between the section from I to N pressed in meters and HE IN is also as the increase an elevation head from point I to and in meters. Similarly, the HVIN also is the increase in velocity head. from I to point N expressed in meters. Now, these are the possible variations and once you, once you find out what is the value of the pressure head at I, you can keep on doing this for each individual point along the main line. And the pressure which is the maximum, that will give you the, the most critical uh, uh, pressure which, which should be used or which should be looked at, which must be taken into account uh, when, you, when you choose a, a main line. And besides that, you will also be interested in what is the pressure I requirement uh, at the pump, what what pump should be selected so the the pressure head required at the pump can also be uh, you can also evaluate with respect to the most critical point and the main line, and that also is uh, I mean. Uh, Theoretically, I think it's better to always find out for each individual point what is the what is the total dynamic head which is required with respect to that point on the main line. If you can do that, then you'll be you'll be much safer because there can be many situations where uh, because of the uh, in increase or decrease in the elevation, you might find that the criticality of a particular point can vary. A point which you feel that should be critical, it might not be critical because of the fact that the, the way the, the, the main line is laid on the field in actual practice. So the total dynamic height requirement must be calculated for each individual point of the, on the main line and uh, you, for finding out the total, total dynamic height of any individual point, you can use this expression which takes care of the various um, head losses prevalent as we have seen in the previous case. These are the various items or the, the terms which must be considered when you are looking at the total dynamic head required at point I. This is the total dynamic head required at point I in the main line expressed in meters and HI we already know what we have we have uh, already mentioned. The HI is the, the pressure 
at that particular location plus HF uh, dash PI is the friction between the friction head loss is the friction head loss from pump to point I first in meters again and the other items are also similar this is the elevation uh, increase in elevation head from the sump to the point I or the level of the water source H E S I is the increase and elevation head from level of water source to point I. And this HFS as the friction head loss on suction side of the pump in meters. Now this total dynamic head should be uh, computed for each individual point on the main line and uh, that head which is or that uh, uh, total dynamic head which is the maximum that should be selected for, uh, for the selection of the, the pump and that time at that time you can also make a decision whether to have a, a booster pump somewhere uh, in the later portion if the pump size is becoming too much that will create a problem of having very excessive pressures in other points of the, the main line. So uh, you have to you have to look at which option to be to be selected. Do you want to select a pump which can uh, cater to the problem or cater to the requirements of all the individual points? But then you have to look at how much is the fluctuation. If the fluctuation is very high, you might decide to uh, use a booster pump instead and avoid using any control devices on the laterals. Now, with this, we will, uh, we have completed the, the detailed design of the sprinkler irrigation system. We have covered almost all the segments of at least one specific type of system where we are not, uh, is not a um, and uh, there are many other types of sprinkler irrigation systems which we have discussed, but we have not, we have not gone into the details of the designs because of the paucity of uh, time available with us. We have taken only the, the conventional uh, sprinkler irrigation system, which is normally in most of the places is becoming more and more popular, and we have discussed almost all the the various aspects of uh, design, how we go about the design and which are the various components which have to be looked at, what are the other uh, uh, details which are important to be considered and with that we close this chapter. Any questions? Okay then.